We're back at Navigating the Road to Cyber Resiliency, the summit made possible by Dell Technologies. I'm Dave Vellante with John Furrier, and we're here with Rob Emsley, who heads marketing for Dell's Data Protection Group and is the visionary behind this entire Navigating series. Rob, thanks for coming out. Good to see you in studio, man. Great to be here. Great to uh, finally see this come to uh, fruition. Yeah, it's been a long time. We've been developing this content program over the years. Well, why the summit? Explain your vision behind that. Yeah, well, we got together, I think it was probably the beginning of the year. And, you know, my goal was to tell a story, you know, to tell the, uh, the community, to tell uh, customers that we either have today, that we don't have today, um, to give them information about cyber resiliency. You know, I think, and certainly from the interviews we've already done uh, today, is that it's clear that people are still struggling with cybersecurity. They're still struggling with how do they make themselves more resilient. So from our perspective, we've been doing this a long time. We've, we've seen a lot of, of, uh, of customer situations. So we really wanted to curate a set of content, uh, working with yourselves, that really spoke directly to the challenges that customers have and the steps that they can take to go on this journey. That's how we, we really came up with the whole, you know, the whole topic. Certainly, you know, we got together in May, did a short format, uh, three segment um, event. We did it again in August, you know, with certainly people from Dell, our customers, you know, you mentioned Keith Bradley from Nature Fresh Farms, certainly global services that you know uh, is always a big part of a cyber resiliency uh, uh, process. And now, you know, I think we really wanted to culminate with a, a lot of content with not only the Dell voice, but the voice of our partner ecosystem. We wanted to bring analysts to bear. We wanted to have some fun. You know, you brought up my old friend, Mark Sorensen, and, you know, the book that you wrote, which just happened to be about the topic of cybersecurity and cyber resiliency. Uh, and that's really what we really wanted to achieve with this particular program. We didn't want it to be a product launch. You know, there's time for that. We really want it to be very educational. Mm -hmm. And that was something that we really set out to achieve. And I think we've made, we I think, think so we've achieved it. Yeah. I mean, I think we were, we were commenting too on that point with the, the, at their opening about the road, navigating the road to cyber resilience. Navigation requires discovery and, and you know, if you're a car, you have navigation systems, you got GPS, Waze or whatever. This has been the focus. You mentioned um, learning, you had the analyst panel just on, I just was over listening to the analysts. It's, it's a holistic company mandate now and people are struggling to navigate and discover, especially under the new architectures emerging with what's around the corner. You're seeing generative AI, you see the cloud hype, you see that reality matching. Uh, with that, so again, this is a, a great concept of road. So you know, in the spirit of traveling down the road, what's the road look like <laughs> as you guys look around the corner? I know you got the roadmap. You really can't tell us about what's on the roadmap, but you know, this road is going to be an ongoing thing for customers yeah. and partners. Yeah, I mean, one of the things that we've been doing for probably about the last decade is going out to a fairly decent sample size of customers asking them questions around data protection, around their challenges. In fact, um, come January, we'll be releasing uh, a, a new set of, of insights. Uh, so the 2024 uh, global data protection research, and it's a special edition focused on cyber resiliency in multi-cloud. You know, one of the things that the survey keeps telling us is that customers just haven't arrived at their destination yet they're still staying awake at night, worried about can they bring the business back you know, after a ransomware attack, after a cyber attack. The encouraging thing is that what we've been finding with this latest research that will come out in January is that they are taking steps. They're learning that immutability of their backups becomes very, very important. You know, as um, I think Gil Heck said earlier, is that bad actors are going after the, the backup data, knowing full well that if that's gone, once they then affect production, then it's game over. So certainly immutability is, is, is now front and center. Customers are learning that they can't go on this journey alone. 
they need help. So whether or not it's with um, uh, global alliances or global system integrators, whether or not that be um, you know, people that work with Dell or, or just um, uh, system integrators that can, can help customers, they, they, they're going to those sources. And, and so the, the good thing is, is that we've seen a year over year um, uh, set of changes that customers are starting to realize. And that's you know, really what brought us to um, you know, kind of get the message out a lot more. Yeah, and the, and the complexity with the, within organizations and the challenges that they have with cybersecurity have to be matched by, you know, you said we're not, it's not a big product you know, launch you know, series, et cetera, but there's, you know, we've talked a little bit about products, Silicon Root of Trust with guys like Intel and Broadcom, but you know, through the software, but it's really about that ecosystem that's so important because you know it's it's sort of a bromide, but it's it's the security is a team sport. It involves everybody. You know we say that, but it's it's really it's true. It, no one company can really solve this problem alone. Yeah. You really have to have you know a company like yours that has the 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 global scope to actually bring in the hardware, the software, the services, the ecosystem, and the expertise to actually apply it to this complicated situation. Yeah. One of the interesting things is that people often forget that Dell's been doing this a long time. I mean, one of the things that, that came up um, in, in other interviews, and you brought up about uh, the, the infamous Sony attack, mm -hmm. that was almost a decade ago. In fact, you know, yeah. next year it will be a decade since that right. uh, attack took place. But that was a trigger event for us to really start our own journey, to really think about how do you help customers recover? You know, we started with a, a very custom built solution in uh, the isolated recovery solution. And we now you know, market that and provide that to customers under the name of Paraprotect Cyber Recovery. So certainly, you know, that's a decade long journey that we've been on. And now if you think about the data protection market and the backup and recovery space, there's not a single vendor out there that hasn't pivoted to lead with cyber recovery and cyber resiliency. You know, I was, yeah. I, I, was, I, 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 I was thinking of an Oscar Wilde quote that the imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. <laughs> you know, so it's, it's good to see. We know that well. It's, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's, it's good to see that the, the community of backup and recovery professionals now really perceives that backup and recovery is such a close adjacency to the whole world of cybersecurity. I think having that expertise too is it gives you economies of scale. Anyone who copies and imitates quickly has diseconomies of scale. That's kind of well-known concept. But the MGM hack just recently we pointed out on our open. To me, that's like that that and the Caesar thing. You gotta pay the crypto or try to recover. If you look at MGM's recovery, Dave, that was brutal, right? They did get back, but it was hard road. And then on the last panel but Caesars was a lot well, they just, they paid up. I mean, is they paid up. They paid up. Now, right? It doesn't so always work to pay. You're not necessarily saying, just well, pay I mean, and, <laughs> and everything will be fine. That's not always the case. It, well, sometimes it, you can't get it back. Even when you pay, you don't get it back. So like right. sometimes it's a whole, I mean, it's a whole ball game there. But I mean, I think that piece, the MGM was a highlight. That last panel you guys talked about, I just made a note here, 25% of mission critical apps are at risk. That's a, to me the notable point because now you have yeah. the recovery piece has to be center stage. Yeah. If you're not thinking about recovery, you're going to assume you're going to get hacked. Wait, un unpack that stat because I think it, the ESG stat was only 25% of organizations say they can recover 80% of their workloads in a, in, in a, in a critical situation. That's, and, and you heard Zia Scaravala say, yeah, and that's overstated. It's probably less than 25% have that level of resilience. So. Yeah, I think that was the exposure. 81 to 91% is 10, and then the, uh, more than 90% mission critical apps are exposed as 25%. Maybe I got that wrong, but you were on the panel. Yeah, what, yeah. What, what no, was the no, data? It's, it's, it's again, again, essentially only 25% of the companies feel like they can recover 80% of their critical apps if, if they get yeah. hacked. I mean, that is, it feels like it's getting more complicated mm -hmm. and it's going to just, again, well, that's why I mean, it requires- You, you mentioned that earlier on the thing, the TAM for the, <laughs> for the bad guys yeah, is like three huge. Trillion. Three trillion plus, 80% of the apps are potentially available. Again, this is the targets. Yeah. So it's not just data protection. But, but you know, that's, that's interesting. And I love the thoughts on this, Rob, because you know, somebody once said to me, you know, it's a lot cheaper to, 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 to stop the attack or put in better cyber resilience than it is to get hacked. Right. And you think about it, security probably 
you know, IDC Gartner numbers, probably $80 billion a year industry, yep. maybe even a hundred. But, but we're talking about three trillion in yep. economic impact. So that's the delta. Yeah. Spend, spend, spend a little bit of money and you're going to lower that expected loss. So that's the key. Yeah, I think you're definitely starting to see customers realizing they need to get the balance right. I mm -hmm. think you're absolutely correct is for many, many years, uh, customers have been investing a lot of their IT dollars on cyber prevention technologies, keeping the bad guys out. The reality is that you've got to also invest in how do you recover when those defenses um, aren't good enough. And I think that uh, the research that we'll bring out in January, we are seeing customers are acknowledging that they are spending um, almost an equal amount now on prevention as well as recovery. And I think that's you know, also very encouraging. You know, back to the, the discussion about mission critical, you know, one of the things that you, know, you certainly see in the industry now is that there's a lot more discussion about things like cyber recovery vaults. You know, quite often you see many vendors promoting, hey, build a cyber recovery vault in the cloud and it will be um, isolated from your on-premises environment and it will be available for you to recover from. But then the challenge is, is that when you have a devastating cyber attack, what's almost the first thing that you lose access to? The vault. The internet. <laughs> yeah, right. So one of the things that we continue to see the majority of customers that work with Dell is they realize that cyber recovery, unlike disaster recovery, has nothing to do with the location. You don't need your data to be somewhere else because your primary data center has been obliterated. In a cyber recovery attack, your cyber recovery, in, in a cyber attack, your cyber recovery data can be in the same location, but just isolated. And that, when you think about mission critical data, if your recovery data is right there and you have the ability to bring back your production systems in an isolated way, then that's the best way to get back up and running as quickly as you possibly can. And that is definitely the name of the game. And you've probably already got your DR strategy in place. So in case you, there's a fire or a flood, Absolutely. you got that covered. It's really the other scenario that's become much more front and center sure. that we saw in some of the earlier data that is, you have to worry about. For sure, for yeah. sure. Um, let's see, we've been talking about the data protection, the evolution and the, and the intersection between cybersecurity and, and data protection. You said something earlier that was always sort of my procession that's sort of an adjacency. One of the things I'm taking away in these last nine months of working with you guys is I'm hearing that it has to be a fundamental component of a, of, of a cyber resiliency strategy, i.e. backup and recovery. Yep. You know, it's got to be really central to, to that. Do you agree with that? And, and, and how should organizations think about making that a reality? Yes, I mean, we, we absolutely believe that. I mean, I think that uh, the, the work that we've been doing um, in uh, providing customers with, with backup and recovery infrastructure mm. is, is, is yes, it's for the day-to-day for the, the -day task of, of, of um, recovering from uh, human error, um, recovering from operational failures, uh, but really the last five to 10 years it's really changed to be that, that um, storage of last resort. I mean, I think that uh, the, uh, the development of, uh, of, of cyber attacks, the way that people have discussed how uh, bad actors are not only going after uh, production data environments, but are now realizing that, that the backup corpus uh, is, is where customers are going to go to, you know, it has to be something which you, you build uh, security into the solution. You know, we've, we've spoken about zero trust frameworks. We've talked about the, the pillars that, that are important to zero trust, things like multi-factor authentication, things like role-based access controls, uh, are all things that you need to build into the storage architecture. One of the nice things for us is that we've always controlled the end-to-end -end process. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, certainly, you know, we often get criticized for still being so heavily into the, into the Dell backup appliance business. But one of the advantages that that gives customers is that it's an end-to-end -end solution all the way down to 
the storage device that you're actually um, relying upon uh, to bring back your data. So that's always been a, a real uh, positive benefit to us. Mm -hmm. The interesting thing is that our backup appliances have always been an open ecosystem. So, you know, we've started um, um, leveraging that more with vendors that, that, that many times people would class as competitors to us, mm -hmm. but from a backup appliance perspective, they're partners to us. You know, whether it be, um, you know, other um, enterprise backup and recovery leaders in the industry that have integrated tightly with the APIs that we provide mm -hmm. uh, to allow the Dell backup appliances to be an integral part, even if it's just an integral, uh, integral part for cyber resiliency and cyber recovery. Mm. I mean, we heard that from Druva, CEO, founder, um, talking about what he's doing. We heard about the cloud with the analysts piece of it. We heard um, the edge is emerging again, the road, is here. The question I want to ask you is, you know, how is the road these days? So the road to <laughs> navigating the road to cyber resilience and recovery, is it bumpy? Is it smooth? Was there a corner? Is, it, is, it, is there a corner? You don't want to be doing hundred miles an hour and then you know, take that corner and then you're off the cliff. Um, so, you know, people are going to want to need to know markers. Yeah. You know, what's going on? You know, how, how's it look? What's the current environment? How do you see that? Obviously, you got some announcements coming up next week, next year. You got you tease the, 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 the research you're going to re release in January. What does that road look like right now for customers as they're driving down that road and trying to figure it out? Yeah, I mean, certainly when a company invests in a data protection solution, it has to have some basics that have to be covered. I mean, you have to have a secure infrastructure straight out of the gate. You have to have immutability of backups as they get created. But one of the things that we continue to believe is that the concept of isolation is still a, a huge differentiator for us. Uh, that is certainly something which, as I mentioned, is, has matured over the last decade of, of us working on that. Um, and what we tend to find, and one of the advantages that we have as a company, and we've had a number of guests on during the the, uh, the series is the availability of global services from Dell and then our partner ecosystem. Mm -hmm. the, uh, I think it was Rob Stretchy on the last, uh, on the last segment, you know, talked about it's not a product um, solution, it's a product, people, and process. And that is so true when it comes to cyber resiliency. You know, my perspective is that you see a lot of people that will, that will um, introduce cyber into their product messaging, they introduce mm -hmm. zero trust into their product messaging, and that is, to me, messaging, um, <laughs> messaging <laughs> and also maybe a little bit disingenuous. Yeah. You know, we've certainly learned over the course of uh, this content that cyber resiliency is a multifaceted discipline. Um, and the belief system that you see in the industry that buy this and you will inherently become more secure is I think a, um, a disingenuous message. Well, I mean, I, after the MGM and these other texts we've been monitoring, I think the customers are smarter now. They have to squint through the, the messaging uh, and get to the reality because you know they are next I mean, this legit ransomware is on fire in terms of TAM. There's more TAM, so so the I think the I think the market's getting smarter from what I'm seeing because again we heard from the analysts it's fight fire with fire. I think Zia said I thought that was a good comment. You guys to see more aggressive knowledge. That's why I like this discovery angle on this road to cyber resilience because there are new techniques emerging, but you guys have differentiation that adds to that. So whether you're integrating into cloud with Druva mm -hmm. or have some edge, you got partners. So I think this is a a unique time for that whole space, because the old way doesn't work anymore. For sure. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> you got to wrap, Rob, but you maybe give us your last take. I mean, I'm really excited about, uh, uh, thank you for bringing in Mar Mark E. Sorensen and his book, uh, Restaurant in Jaffa, because this all gets more complicated when you have critical infrastructure, which historically used to be air gap, now it's connected, yep. right? So the, the world is getting more complicated and we have to take different approaches, but I'll give you the last word here, please. Yeah, I mean, I think you'll see more from us um, both from, from this type of, uh, of, of content programming. You know, we're big believers in, in, in educating the community. Um, you know, certainly as we move into next year, you know, we'll, we'll bring out uh, our latest research from a global data protection perspective. Uh, but certainly expect to see 
a little bit more Dell practical uh, uh, information from uh, kind of our roadmap as we uh, continue to, to focus on this as many companies are mm. as the kind of the, the tip of the spear for what we do from a data protection perspective. Rob, thank you. Really appreciate you coming on. Great to be here. Okay, up next, we have an amazing guest, Liz Green. She's the EMEA Advisory and Cybersecurity Lead at Dell Technologies. We sat down last week and talked about notable differences between today's environment and the past, how regulation has evolved, how EU is leading is some of the complexities of cross-border policies. We talked about data sovereignty, data privacy, data protection. Check it out. <laughs>